Hi, it's Tuesday, and this is Allegra with your dose of modern life. Healthier, easier, more fun. On today's show, we're going to talk about the nasty little word, impossible, and a time when a doctor crushed me by saying it. Then we'll have a friendly chat with my friend entrepreneur, mom, and actress, Kim Hawthorne, about everything she does and why she does it all. Then I'm going to give you a few no-cook recipes that are surefire holiday pleasers. All this and more after the brief musical interlude. See you after the tunes. We're back. Now, before I get into the word impossible, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about why I started this podcast. You see, I'm a normal person. I'm not famous. But I've had the opportunity to do certain things in my life. And I've had people tell me that they've learned or changed or grown or been inspired by the things that I've told them or taught them. But the thing is, is I'm constantly inspired by quote unquote everyday people, people around me in my life. And as an avid student of personal development, I've listened to and read a lot of experts out there. And while there's a lot of good stuff out there, I also felt that sometimes what they said didn't really apply to me. You know, as a woman, as a mom, as a primary caregiver, sometimes you can't really make the time to implement some of these great tactics, like spend 90 minutes focused on one task. I can't remember the last time I spent 90 minutes doing one single thing. I'm always getting my direction, my attention pulled in different directions. So I thought I would add my voice to the mix because I believe my goal is to light as many sparks as possible within other people. I believe everyone can be a spark in the world. And I believe that if everyone was living a life of passion and authenticity and pursuing what they wanted to be pursuing, that the world would be a better place. So that's why I'm adding my voice here in the hopes that it will inspire you. Now I'm also constantly in awe of the many parents I know who parent alone, the single moms and dads out there. You see, I really believe the greatest culture change can come from a generation of really good parents raising a generation of really amazing kids. I mean, when I think to myself about the fact that we could change this world in one generation if the parents raise the kids the right way. And I am just constantly in awe of single parents because I know how hard it is parenting with a spouse. And so I want to bring voices that will speak to you too. I want to interview people that you might not ordinarily hear from. And I hope that you know that you are changing the world by being a parent. Now, let's get into that ugly little word, impossible. About 11 years ago, I sustained an injury to my L5-S1 vertebra that left me bedridden. And the reason why I was bedridden is because I was frozen in this hunched over position that made it impossible for me to sit. And it also made it impossible for me to stand without having to lean on a counter. And for three months, I underwent tests, I did physical therapy, traction, ultrasound treatments, all sorts of different things. But I was not improving. So at the three month mark, my doctor said to me, Allegra, I think this is the best it's going to be. It will be impossible for you to ever get back to the level of activity you used to do. Now, before I tell you (laughs) how I felt when he said that, Let me just explain that I have been an athlete my whole life. I started playing soccer when I was 10. I played through college. I was a varsity athlete in multiple sports in high school. I still ski, bike, stand up, paddleboard, hike, yoga, you name it. So I'm very active. So when he told me that I would never be able to do those things again, It was like he was killing a part of my identity. 
But he didn't just stop there. He then went on to say, And by the way, if you ever decide to get pregnant, it will be very difficult and painful. And in my head, it was so quiet, but so loud, because it was as though a bomb had exploded. And time stood still. It was like one of those scenes in the Matrix where you can see the water droplets. And I felt like I sat there for many, many minutes, just hearing the word impossible echoing in my head. I mean, I was only 31 years old. This couldn't be it for me. I was also married. I'd been married for a couple years. And while we weren't actively talking about having children, that was absolutely on the table. And it was like he took my future away. With that one word. But you know what? I once heard a saying that when you act like a victim, you give your power up. And that the way to take your power back is to accept whatever small part you had in the tragedy that befalls you. And the truth was, I'd been lazy. I'd been lazy before the accident, and I'd been lazy in my rehabilitation. And when I say lazy, I don't mean truly lazy. I mean, I was prescribed an hour of physical therapy, and I did that hour of physical therapy, believing that it was going to get me back to where I needed to get. But when he said that word impossible, it was like he waved a red flag in front of my face. And truthfully, it was exactly what I needed to hear. So the next day, I went to work. And instead of that one hour of physical therapy he had prescribed me, I started doing six to eight hours of physical therapy every single day. I mean, why not, right? I couldn't go to work because I couldn't even drive. I couldn't stand or sit at a desk. So every day, six to eight hours a day, the first thing I would do is I would walk a two mile, a two mile loop in my neighborhood. This walk usually took me 20 to 30 minutes before I injured myself. Now it took me three hours because that's how slowly I walked. I was like the tin man before he'd been oiled. And when I read my journal that I kept from this time, it was hard. I would get so depressed because day after day would pass and I would feel like I wasn't improving at all. But eventually, those six to eight hour days added up and became weeks. And I thought I was starting to be able to stand a little bit straighter. And then the weeks turned into months and I was able to start walking normally. And then almost before I knew it, it had been a year and I stood on top of a ski run, looking down, scared out of my mind that the doctor still might be right. But I skied it as though I had never been injured. Four years later, I would prove my doctor wrong again when I'd have an easy, painless pregnancy. So there, doctor know-it-all. But you know, when I look back now, I am so thankful for that experience. I'm so thankful 
that that doctor said that word to me because it made me so much stronger. And I've accomplished so many things that people would call impossible because of what that experience taught me. Because I learned that in the words of Muhammad Ali, impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. It is not a declaration. It's a dare. So I dare you to go out and do the impossible. Because everything you want in life is just outside your comfort zone. Now I just want to leave you with one other thought. Because while my story is interesting, <laughs> there's another story that is so impossible. I just have to share it with you. You see, there's a man. His name is James Lawrence. He's called the Iron Cowboy. And in 2015, at the age of 36 years old, he <laughs> did the impossible. He completed 50 triathlons in 50 days in 50 different states. That's 2.4 miles of swimming, 112 miles of cycling, and a full marathon every single day for 50 days in a row. You should look him up and read more about him. But I hope his story teaches you that impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Coming up, my chat with entrepreneur, mom, and actress Kim Hawthorne, and then some fun cocktail recipes after this break. Up next, my chat with entrepreneur, mom, and actress Kim Hawthorne, and then a couple of easy holiday recipes after the tunes. Hello, world. I want to introduce you to my friend, entrepreneur, mom, and actress, Kim Hawthorne. Hi, Kim. Hi, Allegre. I just love modern technology. I'm talking to Kim. Kim's in Texas. I'm in Los Angeles, and here we are chatting. Now, I've known Kim for a number of years, and although she might be best known as a very successful actress, in fact, she plays a lead character, Carissa Greenleaf, on the OWN Network, so Oprah-produced show, Greenleaf, which is up for an image award, but I actually know Kim better as an entrepreneur, and that's why I wanted to interview her, because we're both moms, we're both entrepreneurs, and she and I are there cheering each other on, which is so important, and so Kim, tell us a little bit about your latest project. You recently just launched a business. Yes, on November 1st, I officially launched the Regal Wrap, and it is a head wrap business. Um, there are lots of people out there doing head wraps and promoting head wraps and celebrating head wraps. And what makes the Regal Wrap different is that you don't have to wrap it yourself. You just put it on like a hat and get on about your business. Um, the idea came from a need that I saw that um, women had. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a single mom of two. I'm a very busy uh, type A personality woman. And <clears throat> I don't have a lot of time to be in the mirror, you know, crimping and trying to put a head wrap on in three, four, five, six, seven tries. Um, so I would, uh, when I did get it right, I'd post myself on Facebook and I would get comments from friends saying, oh my God, you look so great in your head wrap. I wish I knew how to do that. I can never get mine right. They don't come out right. And every time I would post for probably about six months, I noticed that I would constantly get one or two of those types of comments in my comment area on Facebook. And I just started thinking, what would it be like to just have a head wrap that you could just put on your head without having to wrap? Is that possible? <laughs> a wrapless wrap. A wrapless wrap, yes. <laughs> and so at that point, I decided to answer that question. Um, I definitely knew there was a need for it. 
And I was determined to figure it out. And so I um, basically bought a, a sewing machine. I knew nothing about sewing. I, I, I think the sewing machine sat in my box for four days before I even opened it because I was just so intimidated. You know, <laughs> I just stared at it for four days. And eventually I took it out and I learned how to, you know, thread it and sew. And I... <sighs> figured out that I needed um, craft paper to make patterns. Everything was just kind of a ask people, go on the internet, search, figure out how to do it. And I eventually came up with um, a couple of designs that actually worked. And I hired um, a company to uh, design a very professional website, which from being in business a long time um, and, and, being an online shopper, I knew that it was very important to have a website that looked professional because I wanted to be able to compete with other businesses. And I know for a fact, just from my research, that um, if a website is not attractive and it doesn't look professional, that you'll lose possible customers just on that alone. So I knew that I had to spend the money to have it professionally designed, which I did, and I'm glad that I did. And um, I started with 20 products on there on November 1st. And I'm literally <clears throat> freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that saying is the thing you hope for and, and you wish for and then dread the most at the same time. Be because, careful what you wish for. Because, careful what you wish for, because I'm now chasing my tail. Um, Viola Davis, who pretty sure your audience knows who she is. Um, she's an Emmy Award winning um, Oscar nominated. I don't, I don't know if she won the Oscar, but she's been nominated several times for Oscars and she's won Golden Globes. And, you know, she uh, saw the Regal Rap on Facebook and said, I, I, I want a Regal Rap. I want a Regal Rap. <laughs> and we just happen to have a mutual friend. One of my good friends is one of her good friends. And her, she told me, hey, Viola wants some Regal Raps. And I sent some to her Thanksgiving day and she posted a picture of her wearing her regal wrap and it's been amazing. Like it's just taken off like wildfire. I have orders to fill every day now. Yay. <laughs> now, so what's amazing about Kim now, one of the reasons why I started my show is Kim and I are lifelong learners. We love personal development, but I think as a woman and as a mom, as a primary caregiver, you know, we've discussed how sometimes it just doesn't feel like it speaks to us, to our lives, right? We can't always just focus eight hours a day on business and work and everything. And what I really want to do is give, you know, those people who maybe Richard Branson doesn't speak to you, you love what he does, but it doesn't really speak to you. I really want to give that to our listeners. So Kim has been gracious in agreeing to, you know, talk a little bit about the behind the scenes. See, because Kim and I, root each other on we we talk when we're like upset about things when things aren't going well I mean we don't just wake up and and it's not all success all the time right Kim oh no I mean listen the head wrap business is looking like it's going to be a success and I still have mornings where I wake up and go what was I thinking why did I sign myself up for this <laughs> you know? I, I was talking to my friend that I'm visiting here in Texas and I said you know I like to learn. I am an avid uh, believer in learning and I like to be challenged and I like to grow. So a large part of me even thinking about bringing the head wrap idea to fruition was all of the learning curves I'd have to go through in order to accomplish it. And then once I kind of accomplished, like even designing the, the, the website and all of the behind the scene things that go on with the website content and things that I didn't know about that I had to produce in a timely manner was a challenge and a learning curve. And you get past that, then it launches and then it's kind of a letdown. It's like, well, now what, you know, Oh, now I get to fill orders. Oh, okay. You know, so it's, <laughs> um, it never ends. You know, I have to constantly give myself a pep talk. I have to constantly, one thing I've definitely noticed with the head wraps is I don't get to say, I don't feel like doing it today. Because I know if I have an order and sometimes I'll have the material and, and I know that I have enough material to fill a certain amount of orders. And then somebody actually orders that 
design that head wrap and that material, I may have to literally make the head wrap. I can't afford to say, you know, I don't feel like doing it. So it's a, it's a lot about learning about being disciplined beyond your emotional uh, feelings. Uh -huh. You know, you have to, and I, and, and, and here's the thing. I've been a professional. I, I'd have to say my whole life. And I know that some people may look at acting and think that that's not a legitimate profession, but I beg to differ because I, I always make this argument with my actor friends is that we probably are more professional than a lot of people because we're not just clocking in and clocking out. So not only are we professional, but we have to have a mental fortitude that nine to fivers don't have to have, you know, um, and we have to be very strategic with our money and, um, and all sorts of things. So that has helped me understand how to be professional and flexible and strategic and thick skinned in other endeavors that I take on. Um, and I don't even know why I was saying all that, but um, cause I honestly just went on a, off on a tangent. Uh, <laughs> and no, I don't remember good. what, Oh, your question was like, is it all easy peasy? Basically? No, it's not. It's a, it's a daily, um, it's a daily, uh, grind. Sometimes it's easier. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Um, I find that I'm a goal setter. Once I reach a goal, then it's like, well, what next? What next? You know, that's just always, that's always how I've been. Um, but in the day to day, I have children. I have to get them to school. I have to get their homework. I have to sign those crazy papers they send home. I have to um, go to the school shows and cook and make sure they have their extracurricular things that they're doing if they're interested in something. I wake up at three o'clock like other parents in the morning worrying about my kids, worrying am I doing the right thing for them? You know, am I being a good mom? Is being away working from, you know, away from them when I work a bad thing? You know, so it's about balancing all of that, all of that out, you know, and it's, it's not rosy all the time. So can now, we talk about that a little bit about being a single mom? Sure. Be because I, you know, I mean, being, being a woman and, you know, doing, being a primary caregiver and being a business person is what a lot of women are doing nowadays. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like I have so many single mom friends who are, you know, small business entrepreneurs. And I, I think the most important thing we do in life is be parents because that's where culture change really happens. I mean, I just, I get excited when I think, what if everyone was a really invested parent? What would the next cult, what would the next generation look like? And so I'm curious why, so in terms of being a single, so answer this question from the perspective of single mom, right? So you're a successful actress, you're on this amazing show, and you decided to start this new business, The Regal Wrap, was, I know part of it, you and I have talked about legacy and how that's important to you. So can you answer sort of the question of why did you decide to embark on this big new project, new business, when, you know, you have your hands full being a single mom and being an actress on a successful show? Like, what was the thought process there? Well, the thought process, and this is may sound a little crazy, but I think anybody out there that's gotten an idea <laughs> in their head and has seen it through to fruition might be able to understand this. I was possessed with the idea of the regal rap. It took over me, like it, it haunted me. <laughs> and there haven't, the, 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 you know, there haven't been too many things in my life that have haunted me like that. Acting was one of them. <laughs> so when I felt that pull, I had to answer, it was a call and I had to answer the call. And I feel like it was a higher calling. But the challenge was, I don't know how to sew. I don't know anything about, you know what I mean? Like, who am I to try to make a, a you know, um, so I, but, but, but it wouldn't leave me alone. And I know from 
doing business and doing other things besides acting and understanding uh, the economy and ways of living and things like that. And just from being an actor that multiple streams of income is never a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I make, and maybe this is where I might be different from a lot of people, but I don't care if I make 25 extra dollars a week doing the regal rap. That's $25 I can put in my gas tank. That's a, that's, you know, a new pair of pants for my kids. That's how I think. Mm -hmm. So I just have, you know, I don't have a middle name in real life, but it needs to be hustler. Okay. <laughs> because I just, you know, I'm a hustler. I, I like to hustle. And it's like, well, if I can get this regal rap thing going, and it can just start generating money while I sleep, which it does now, because when I wake up, I have orders. How can that be bad? Now, the painful part is the process of seeing it to birthing it, you know, like being in labor with it. Right. So that's always painful and it's uncertain. You, you're not sure, you know. Um, but it's not painful as in, oh, my God, I just burned myself. It's just painful as in how it's a challenge, right? Like you said growing, earlier. Growing how am I gonna figure it out? Yeah, it's growing pains. It's growing and, pains. And so, again, just so people realize that there's a trade-off, there's, there's a trade-off in order for me to accomplish the things I accomplish, for, in order for you to accomplish the things you accomplish. What, what do you do less of in your life because you're so focused uh, on growing okay. as a person and challenging yourself? Okay. Case in point. Last week, a friend of mine contacted me on a Tuesday and said she had tickets to a Chris Rock concert, you know, comedic mm -hmm. concert. Mm -hmm. And she's like, do you want to go? And, you know, we're in L.A., so I had to, like, first of all, try to figure out what time it was and what part of town it was in. Because <laughs> in, my, in my reasoning, from where I live, I'm like, well, if it's in Hollywood, I, I might can make this happen at sure at, you know, a rush hour kind of time, right? Eight o'clock, get, get there eight. I was like, but if it's downtown, I don't think I'm going. Okay. So then after I thought through that and I was waiting for her to text me back before she'd even get back to me, I just said, you know what? I can't go. I'm not going to go. I have to make these wraps. <laughs> yeah. And she knows about the head wraps, the regal wrap. So she just said, okay, no problem. Um, I understand how's it going. So those are some of the sacrifices that I make. You know, I have to purchase supplies and things like that. So that means, hey, maybe I don't take that trip. That's fifteen hundred dollars. I spent spend that money on material. You know, right? You're investing. Yeah. yeah, those are the kind of sacrifices, and a lot of a lot of my sacrifices are social sacrifices. I would say, yeah, right. Well, thank you so much, Kim. Can you please share with us your URL so people can know how to find your businesses and you personally? Sure. Um, if they want to find me personally, they can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the, T-H-E, Kim Hawthorne. And that's Hawthorne with an E. And if anyone's interested in the Regal Rap, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the Regal Rap. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kim Hawthorne. Thank you, Allegri Ramos. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, easy holiday recipes after the tunes. We're back. Now we're going to talk about those easy no-cook recipes. Today we're going to talk about three things, tzatziki, deconstructed devil eggs, and guacamole. Now, I teach cooking classes called intuitive cooking, which are all about cooking without recipes, learning to trust yourself and your creativity to make things based on just what's in your fridge. Now, tzatziki is a Greek yogurt and cucumber dip. However, there's a similar dish in many cultures all over the Mediterranean, from India, where they call a similar dish raita, to Armenia, where it's called zhajik. Now, my favorite type of tzatziki is made with Greek yogurt, which is simply yogurt that has been strained. Now, if you can buy Greek yogurt, I would just buy a tub of it, which is 16 ounces, 
and then get three Persian cucumbers. Now the reason I like Persian cucumbers is that they're crunchy and sweet. You don't have to peel them. So three Persian cucumbers, organic if possible, and just chop them up, not too fine. Then add a little bit of salt. Now when people ask me how much salt, I always say, how much salt do you like? So add some salt, taste it until it's the way you like it. Start with maybe a quarter or half a teaspoon and go from there. Then add dill. Now, every culture uses different things. If you don't like dill, try mint. I've even heard of some people putting in things like rose petals or raisins into their tzatziki. However, I like to stick with salt and dill, and I put a lot of dill in it. Dried dill, because dried dill has a subtler, almost smoky flavor. I'd say start with a tablespoon and then go up from there. I like it to look really almost equal parts white and green. And then garlic. Now I like a lot of garlic, you might not like garlic. I put in three cloves chopped up really fine. Mix it all up, serve it with some pita bread or some vegetables or some rye crisps. It's a very versatile dish. I also like it with kebab. The second dish is deconstructed deviled eggs. Now whenever I make these, people are always surprised at how easy it is. You see, I love deviled eggs, but I hate the work of scooping out the yolk and blah, 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 blah. And these are so easy to transport and make that I often make them, you know, when we're picnicking my family on the beach or whatever. Simply hard boil some eggs, or you can even buy pre-peeled hard boiled eggs. Cut them in half, put them on a plate. Then I simply put out little containers, one with a little bit of Dijon, one with mayonnaise, one with cayenne pepper, one with paprika, and then I get sandwich pickles, which are pickles that are sliced really thin and flat, and I cut those in half or in thirds, and I put those out. And then I tell people, hey, deviled egg bar, assemble it the way you like it. People have so much fun with this, and when I serve it with the tzatziki and guacamole, sometimes I even have people who use those items on their deconstructed, dev deconstructed deviled eggs. It's so easy and fun. You'll love it. Finally, guacamole, the great crowd pleaser. Get some ripe avocados. Now a good way to tell if an avocado is ripe but not too ripe is if the little button where the avocado has fallen off from the tree, if it's still intact, if you remove it and it's a nice green color in there, then you know that it is not overly ripe. If, however, there are black strings in there, it means it's starting to turn to the point where it's developing roots inside the fruit. Now take an avocado, I just chop it very lightly because I like my avocado chunky personally. If you like it smoother, you can beat it up as much as you want. Then for every two avocados, I would use about one Roma sized tomato. Again, chop that as fine as you like. I like chunky avocado, so I keep it chunky. Then take cilantro, which is also called coriander or Chinese parsley. And I like to use just the leaves However, the stems have excellent flavor, and so if you like the stems and the texture of the stems, just dice them really, really, really fine and add them in there. Finally, salt and cumin. Now, cumin is one of those herbs that a lot of people don't like how it smells, but it tastes differently than it smells, so give it a try. And just start with a sprinkle and go from there. Same with the salt. Finally, lemon juice. The lemon juice is so important. Without the lemon juice, it's missing that little bit of acidy kick that really makes a difference. Mix it all together, serve with tortilla chips or whatever else you want to do, and you've got some great guacamole. I had a lot of fun today sharing with you about why I started this podcast, my friend Kim, and that ugly word impossible. And I hope that you learned something today. If you did, if you thought that this podcast was fun and useful, then show me that you then show me that you appreciate it and you can do this by going to patreon and leaving me a tip five dollars a month you can buy me some coffee that's patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash my name allegra ramos a-l-e-g-r-e-r-a-m-o-s i'll see you next tuesday for your weekly dose of modern life healthier easier more fun We'll be doing some call-ins next week, which if you would like to call in, if you go to anchor.fm slash Allegra, A-L-E-G-R-E, you can actually do a call-in and ask me a question, any question. I'll answer the best ones and play them on the air. Subscribe to my podcast. You can add the RSS feed however you like it. And if you'd like to submit questions, 
by writing them, you can send them to hello at alegraramos.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week.